Did you ever want to visually see all the timings for the tasks that are occurring in your project? Well, that's where Notion Timeline comes in. This is a, a view of the task within your database and it acts a little bit like a supercharged Gantt chart. So let's jump on the computer and see how we can set one up. I've put together some sample data for a website redesign project. Now this data is in a table view in Notion and it's very simple, there's just three properties and the first one is name, uh, so it goes through the different tasks, so we're going to do some research first, then make some designs before doing web development, uploading some new content and then finally doing some SEO checks before launching the new website. The second property is status and we're just going to use the default statuses that come with Notion. So done in progress and not started. And the final property is date. Now the important part here is that we actually have a start and end date. And to get those we just click on a date and you'll see down here there is a toggle button for turning uh, end date on and off. Normally it is off, so all you need to do is toggle it on again. And then select the end date. Now what we want to do is add a new view. So come on and click on the plus sign and we're going to choose timeline view. And then there are a few options here. So show timeline by date, we'll keep that. You can show table. Now what if we toggle that on, we have a table of our tasks. And then for table properties, one is shown at the moment and that one is this one, which is the name of the task. So we're, we'll keep that. And you can decide to open pages in a side peak or a center peak or full page. We'll just keep it as default at the moment and click on done. If you did want to get rid of this list of tasks at a later time, you can click on this double arrow um, to toggle it on or off. The one thing that you'll immediately notice is that our list of tasks is all jumbled up from what we had in our table. Um, but we can sort this out. So if we just come to sort, click on that, and then what I find is the best is to actually click on date and we're gonna put them into date order. And what you want to do is put them into date ascending. And this will then um, sort them by start date. Then what we have here, you'll see that not only is our list of tasks in the correct order, but the tasks in our new timeline are flowing one after the other. To display your data how you want, you can come up to the date range here and you can see there's a drop down. So you can choose, let's say, to show it by quarter and you can get all the data on to one view or you can choose by week. So you can display your data exactly how you want. If you ever get lost, you can always click on the today and that will bring today back into the middle of the screen. And you can also uh, navigate using these arrows. So let's start thinking about how we would use this timeline in real life. A common thing that you might want to change is the time of a task. So let's say that our competitor research was overrunning and we wanted a, a couple of extra days. We can just pull the end of that bar across. Um, so all you need to do to change a time is to hover over the start or the end and then move it across. And those times for that particular task, they'll also be reflected in the times here. So they'll automatically be updated. You can also move a whole task in one go. So just click on it and move it across, say back a day or two. Each task within our timeline is its own page, as with other databases in Notion. So to open the page, so say it's for competitor research, you either click on open there, or you can click on the name in the timeline. The page will open here, in this case in a side peak, so we can add additional information here. So if we wanted to add more properties, 
So let's say we wanted to add more team members. Say you had a team, you could add a, a person property and then you could assign each individual task to different people within your team or maybe to contractors who are working with you. You can also add additional text here, uh, which is related to the particular task. So you could mention how you're going to carry out, in this case, our competitor research, or you could even add an inline database, which has maybe got all our competitors and their relative strengths and weaknesses. There are sometimes tasks within a project that are dependent on another. So within this particular project, we have to complete or upload in all our new content before we can do the SEO checks. And the SEO checks have to happen before the launch of the website. To account for this in Notion, we can use what, is, what are called dependencies. So click on the three dots here and come down to dependencies. And by default, it's turned off. We want to turn it on. And we're just going to use the default settings at the moment. So here and then we're going to choose to avoid weekends as we want a bit of time off and then turn on dependencies. And we're going to scroll to these particular tasks. And now when you hover over the end, you'll see that there's an arrow with a circle on it. Now we're going to click on that and move it to SEO tasks. So those two tasks are now linked. And then we're going to do the same for SEO checks and then to launch the website. Now let's just see what happens if, our, let's say our uploading new content, it overruns a couple of days into the next week. Let's see how that affects um, these tasks which are, are dependent on it. So if we just move this along, to let's say the Tuesday. Now you see that the line has gone red. And then when I release it, you'll see that SEO checks and also the launch of the website have now been pushed back. Now if at a later time we find that actually we were able to do this content quicker, let's see what happens when we move it back again. Well, you can see that this has moved back, but these dates haven't changed. And that is due to how we set it up in our dependencies. So if we come back to dependencies, you'll see that there's two different settings here. The first one is shift only when dates overlap. This is what we've had at the moment. And you can see there's a little diagram here which explains how it works. But there is another option which you could choose, which is shift and maintain the time between the items. And as you go backwards and forwards, they always stay together. So they're like um, linked tasks. And then the final option you have is do not automatically shift them. And it will just well, it'll basically tell you that there's uh, an issue by changing the color of the line to red. But then you would have to move the, the individual tasks on your timeline. I'm going to leave it to the default. One downside of the timeline view is you can't actually see which tasks have been completed. So there is a couple of ways around this. So one is to click on the three dots and come down to properties. And then we can actually add properties to this view. So if we add status, just click on the eye icon and then you can see the status of each of these tasks actually on the timeline view. Some people like that. Personally, I think it can start to look cluttered. So I'm going to take that off, click on the eye icon to hide it. And then I think a better way of displaying the status of each task is to click on the plus sign and actually add a, an additional view which is a board view. We click on done. And then we've got each of our tasks and they're divided by whether they've been started, they're in progress or they've actually been done. And then you can very easily move these about as the statuses change. So what you have now is three views of all the tasks within your project, the table, the timeline and 
the board view. And that's a very powerful way of viewing your data. It's all the same data, but you're just viewing it in three different ways. I hope you found this video useful, but if you'd like to learn more about using boards in Notion, then check out this video, which goes into more detail of how to use this Kanban style boards for your project management.